Today we're going to talk about the sheer power that is the Crassus Armoured Assault Transport, and please read that in capitals. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Today we're back for another Imperial Guard Forge World review, this time looking at the Crassus, where we'll be looking over its datasheet, any obvious buffs and synergies in game, and how I would use one in a game of 40k now. Before we get into all that though, I thought it would be worth talking about why whenever you see it written on the internet, it's likely going to be capitalised, and had its entire name written out. I thought it would have been interesting to find out where that meme came from, so I googled it, and it turns out it all stems from a Daka Daka thread all the way back in 2011. As you can see, this gentleman here has created a thread, Forge World's new Crassus Armoured Assault Transport, what to put in it, and then written, Hello gentlemen, I was trying to purchase a Forge World Crassus Armoured Assault Transport, all capitalised, that just came a month ago and thinking for using it in apocalypse games or normal games, and he's asking for advice as to what to put in it. The internet enjoyed the capitalization of the words, and he got responses such as load your Crassus Armored Assault Transport with as many Cyclops demolition vehicles as you can get. One chap saying, if I had a Crassus Armored Assault Transport, I'd take a bunch of convicts as they get taken to their death, or if I had allies, my Crassus Armored Assault Transport would have an Inquisition and its retinue in. And someone's chipped him with, for fluff purposes, what else would a platoon of guardsmen be transported in other than a Crassus Armoured Assault Transport? Again, all capitalised. Some very foresightful person in the thread said, and potentially a meme is born. And then the OP got back to them saying, Guys, enough with all the caps. I only just copied and pasted the name from the Forge World website. I wasn't going to retype it in undercase. But by then it was apparently too late. So if you do dare to write the name of this transport on the internet, and you don't put it in capitals, you can near guarantee that someone is going to try and correct you on it. In any case, leaving internet subculture behind now, the Crassus is named after one of Lord Solar Macarius' greatest generals, Borgen Crassus. It's a frankly enormous Imperial Guard transport vehicle, easily capable of holding 30 Guard infantry inside. The Crassus's drive system is considerably more powerful than other vehicles of its size, allowing its enormous armoured bulk to be manoeuvred at fairly high speeds towards the enemy, to better serve its function as a kind of enormous assault ram, wading through the heaviest of enemy fire, before disgorging a platoon of infantry to capture a vital position. Compared with other vehicles of its size, it's relatively lightly armed, typically sporting four heavy bolters, to better focus on its role as a transport. So in the actual rules, Rekrasus is a Lord of War choice for Codex Imperial Guard, and when taking into account the heavy bolters, it will cost you 232 points to field in game. It's got a movement of 10, weapon skill of 5+, plus, ballistic skill 4+, plus, strength and toughness of 8, 20 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8, and a 3 plus save. So a pretty durable platform, certainly more so point for point than most other Lords of War, but not really significantly different to its standard weight in points cost of Lehman Ross tanks. In terms of options, it can replace those heavy bolters with either heavy flamers, auto cannons, or las cannons, and to be honest, any of these are fairly reasonable. The reason being that this thing has the steel behemoth special rule, which means it can fall back and still shoot and charge, and it can still fire all of its weapons when it's within one inch of the enemy, and it doesn't suffer the movement penalty for moving and firing with heavy weapons. As it's such a big armoured and durable transport, you could easily justify packing four las cannons onto it, I stop its cost at 260 points, but it would at least have some offensive bite and make its firepower less incidental on the battlefield. The auto cannons are fine as well, point for point, and unusually for once I'm not quite as down on the heavy flamers on this platform. The reason being is that it's primarily a transport, so it will be needing to get relatively close to the enemy if it's delivering infantry. Having that steel bear moth special rule means that even if you do get tags in close combat for being so close, then you can still fall back and shoot, or just shoot while you're in close combat. And furthermore, unlike other Lords of War, it doesn't have any other big guns that have long range that really mean that you want to be just staying away from the enemy and sitting back to shoot them while being safe. If you loaded this thing up with a bunch of heavy flamers, then you could be quite gutsy with it. I'm still not necessarily saying that they're the absolute best thing points for points, they are very short ranged, and they don't make any use of the move and shoot without heavy weapon penalty ability. But I think that they're possibly one of the best choices here compared with virtually anywhere else in the guard army. On top of this, you can also take a hunter-killer missile, which I could happily take or leave for the extra 6 points, and you can also take a storm bolter or heavy stubber, which I'd usually recommend, I'd recommend the heavy stubber, as it does get that move and shoot without heavy weapons penalty. 
In terms of special rules, it can explode for quite a big explosion. If it rolls a 6, then everyone within 2d6 inches is suffering d6 mortal wounds. So if this thing is about to go down, you really don't want it to happen in your lands. And it's certainly worth saving a command point to be able to re-roll this. It has a unique special rule called Overdrive, which means it can move and still fire all of its weapons in the shooting phase, even if it advanced in the previous movement phase. It doesn't say that they take any heavy weapons shooting penalty or anything. It just says that it can shoot them. So unless you're planning on charging this thing into anything, you may as well be moving it an extra d6 inches every turn, which certainly helps get it a lot closer as its main purpose as a transport vehicle. It also makes those short-ranged heavy flamers that little bit more viable again. The Crassus has smoke launchers, which if you just want it to survive and deliver its transport capacity, then these aren't a bad shout in the first turn, again particularly if it's out of range due to having heavy flamers or something. We've already talked about the Steel Behemoth rule, so that leaves us with its transport capacity, and it can actually transport 35 Astra Militarum infantry, each heavy weapon team counting as 2, and each Ogryn counting the place of 3. So should you wish to, this could very much transport an entire platoon, 3 infantry squads and a command squad with officer, for a big wave of infantry death to the middle of the enemy lines. So overall, the Crassus is a lightly armed but reasonably durable massive infantry transporter, with a couple of useful special rules buffing its movement and its ability to keep on shooting accurately on the move and also while in combat. In terms of buffs and synergies within the Guard Codex, naturally regiment choice is always a reasonable one. Cadian isn't necessarily the strongest for this thing, based on the fact that it's usually going to be on the move, though Kaschan and Custom regiments could certainly help out if it is using heavy flamers. Rerolling those number of shots could be very helpful. Talhan could potentially be used to outflank the thing and anything that it has inside it. And Vostron could give you a little bit of extra range, plus their plus one to hit stratagem. Armageddon could allow it to ignore AP minus one, and Valhallen could keep it fighting for longer. And finally, Mordian could actually be reasonably useful on a frontline assault unit like this, due to better overwatch. Honestly though, I don't think that regiment choice is really the biggest deal with this thing. Most of them aren't enormously helpful with it. And I think it's more important to think about the regiment for whatever infantry it's transporting. You can also get a little bit more out of it with the tank ace traits. If you've yet to buy in a tank ace and it's just going to cost you one command point, then any of them could be potentially useful. Hold down deployment could give you cover until the first time that it moves, which could be good if you're going second, but not particularly useful if you're going first, due to the fact you'd likely want to move it. Inspirational Might could actually be better on this guy than virtually any other Lord of War. It's pretty much to be guaranteed to be near infantry squads, so you might actually have some chance of seeing that rule take effect. And you could give it a regimental trait with Steadfast Leviathan, which could be worth it depending on what regiment that you're playing, but I do feel as a lot of the time it might be better to use your tank ace on something else. In terms of character synergy, if you really wanted to double down on making it an unmovable bulwark, then the Astropath could be used on it for plus one to its save and minus one to hit, which you could even stack with the smoke launchers, meaning that you could have a Crassus with a two plus armor save and minus two to hit for a turn. That thing is not likely to be going anywhere at all, and pretty much guarantees you to deliver your infantry. You could also potentially fix it up with a tech priest trailing it. An extra d3 wounds heal per turn could be a fairly reasonable investment, as it is a vehicle that's fairly likely to be injured but not killed. In terms of stratagems, I wouldn't tend to go mental on this one. It might be very durable, but it's not exactly. King of the damage dealing, meaning that most damage dealing stratagems aren't all that effective. You could potentially use jury rigging to get it back up to be in the next bracket if that's an issue. Defensive gunners could buff its overwatch if needed, and you could use things such as Vengeance for Cadia or Overlapping Fields of Fire to try and get a bit more damage output if it's really going to be helpful for this thing. Probably the biggest tactical question that you'd actually need to address when fielding the Crassus is what you're actually going to put in it. 35 models is a really decent infantry transport capacity, and if you do manage to get those psychic buffs off on it, then there's a really good chance they'll be making it all the way to enemy lines. The aim is generally going to be to have them get out and unleash a perfect volley of rapid fire, or things potentially buffed with other orders, so you can afford to be a little bit more spendy on the infantry than you otherwise would do. If you're using some infantry squads, then plasma guns or plasma pistols are good. You could have a whole bunch of special weapon squads with plasma guns, or command squads with the same. You could also use some veterans with plasma or melter. I'd most certainly think about including an officer or two to give them maximal orders for when they drop. If you were feeling a little bit indulgent in terms of giving them more buffs, then you could use someone such as Harker or Yarrick to give them reroll ones to hit. If you're playing as the Death Corps of Krieg, then those combat engineers with the carcass shot shotguns are one of the best things that you could put in this. They have potentially horrendously high damage and really need a way to get into close combat, and the Crassus is a perfectly good way of achieving that. 
So how would I actually use the Crassus in game then? It's going to be hard to get cover as a Lord of War and prepared positions is useless, so in general I'd think about starting this fairly far up in the deployment zone, load it up with your wave of infantry death inside it, and be big and bold advancing straight towards the enemy. As I said I quite like all the different weapon options on this, I don't think that anything is massively standout or underpowered. You can either keep it cheap with the heavy bolters or auto cannons, or upgrade to the slightly more pricey flamers or las cannons, both options have their advantages. If you are using some of the cheaper options or are out of range with those flamers, it could well be worth popping smoke turn 1. The Crassus is certainly durable, but there's still a very good chance it won't survive the firestorm that the middle of the board usually lends itself to, and the smoke launchers can make the enemy pay for it by using more firepower. With a bit of luck it won't get taken down that turn, and then you can disgorge the infantry next turn, get out 3 inches, move another 6 inches. So in theory you've got a 21 inch bubble of rapid fire threat range from the vehicle and you can apply orders and other buffs to taste and hopefully deal some serious damage to the enemy. After that your Crassus can just make a massive nuisance of itself, with its decent durability it's an absolutely great unit for charging and tying up enemy units, particularly as it can happily fall back, shoot and charge again just to make itself the biggest nuisance possible. It can very much just make it an annoying and durable hard to deal with threat, much in the same way that you would with a Chimera, but three times the size. If it does die right in the centre of the enemy and it doesn't blow up, then it could be worth a Hail Mary command point reroll. As if you roll a 6 when it's got 6 or 7 units around it, it could genuinely win you the game then and there. In terms of competitors in the Forge World range, one of its main competitors is the Gorgon Heavy Transporter, which we'll have to do a video on at some point. This one just costs a little bit over 300 points rather than the 230 odd that the Crassus does, and for that you do get a decent amount more durability, at 30 toughness 8 wounds and also a 5 plus invul save. Honestly point for point it is more durable. And it's got a fairly decent amount of firepower compared with the Crassus's heavy bolters with its twin Gorgon mortars. I do think that point for point the Gorgon is better than the Crassus. The durability and firepower upgrades are pretty decent, but the main drawback of it is that you're investing a ton of points into something that is basically a transport vehicle and isn't really likely to win you the game. If you can save over 70 points and take the Crassus instead, then it might be the better shout. After all, it doesn't really matter how durable the thing is if it's the last thing to die in your army because the enemy can just ignore it for most of the game. I'd also like to say that the Doomhammer could be an interesting alternative option, as one of the base Baneblade chassis with a transport capacity of 25. Now this one costs 364 points, so it's significantly more expensive than either, but as well as the transport capacity, you get 26 wounds, which is more than the Crassus, though it's not as durable point for point. But you do get that awesomely powerful Magma Cannon, which is one of the strongest and general all-purpose weapons of any of the Baneblade chassis. Not as good point for point for being a durable transport, but this thing will do massive damage as well, which is definitely a pro. Overall in its current form I would say that the Crassus is a bit more of a fun unit than a competitive one right now, though I'm certainly not disputing that it could cause problems for your enemy, particularly if they're a little bit light on anti-tank and aren't going to be able to stop you delivering a perfect infantry punch. In terms of the most optimised competitive play though, it just might not be quite as strong as instead of investing in a transport and infantry punch, you could just be taking several Lehman Rush demolishers, which are likely going to be more durable and even more damaging even if you do get your infantry punch perfect. So I'd say not enormously competitive, but unlike many of the other Forge World choices, I think it's very usable, and it's certainly an epic model to put on the table. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the Crassus down in the comments below then, and particularly any other infantry formations that you could put inside it, maybe something like Borgrin could be fun as well. If you've been enjoying the Guard content, feel free to subscribe to Auspets Tactics, there will be plenty more over the coming months. And if you've been enjoying the channel recently, then I'd just like to mention the channel's Patreon page, it is what keeps these videos coming, as it allows me to spend my time making videos compared with working on my real world job. Patreon members get to see some of the channel's videos early, get to vote on polls to see what sort of videos come next, and there's the occasional prize draw where I post out some miniatures, such as this No No Fear Primaris giveaway that we'll be posting out at the start of June. If any of that sounds interesting to you, or you'd just like to support the channel, then the link is down in the description below. And of course, as always, a big thank you to my current Patreons for helping make this channel possible. In any case, thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.